Thanks for having me. Um, a little bit about Timber Products uh, before I get started, just so you know who we are, why I'm here. Um, we'll go through a couple of slides real quick. Uh, we were started in 1969. The main thing that we do is uh, grading lumber, uh, working with the sawmills that actually grade the lumber. We do perform audits at those sawmills. We perform audits at the treating facilities at well, as well. And we've also gotten into the WPM program, and I'll talk a little bit about that before we get on. I'm not going to take too much time on that for you guys, though. I think I'll bore some of you. Uh, some of the divisions that we take care of lumber are treated in HT. Uh, trusses, where a lot of the southern yellow pine goes into, log homes, utility poles, and we'll talk about our labs as well. Our core business uh, is to verify the grade at sawmills. So when a sawmill buys your trees, they make their lumber, uh, they grade their lumber after manufacturing it, then they'll use our stamps to put on that lumber. That way the building code officials can recognize it. We currently have about 200 clientele, and we're now actually over the six, six billion board feet mark. So we have grown significantly. In treated lumber, uh, once the lumber's been manufactured and graded, it gets pressure treated, uh, and we do audits at the treating facilities as well. Uh, we take the retention samples and send those to our lab for analysis. This is not just a, a presentation on TP, but I did want to give you a little background. Uh, in heat treatment, this is one of the largest things that we do. If you're taking the southern yellow pine, and, or any of the species really, and you're going to build a pallet or a crate or any kind of packaging to send overseas, you have to make sure that it's heat treated nowadays. It started in 2001, and this is one of the biggest things that we're involved with nowadays. It's amazing the growth that we've seen in this. We currently have over 2,000 clientele, and that started at nothing in 2001. We'd love for all of our programs to grow that large. Uh, in trusses, uh, we go in, we look at the lumber grade at the truss facilities. We also look at the metal plate connections, look at the engineered drawings to make sure that the trusses have actually been manufactured correctly. In log homes, uh, it's, we have our own grade stamping program. We write our own rules for that, and it is recognized by the building codes. For utility poles, we perform, similar to lumber, we perform visual checks. Uh, we perform chemical treatment checks as well. Uh, the utility poles, telephone poles that you see as you drive down the road. In our labs, we have both physical and chemical testing labs. I discussed the chemical testing lab a little bit. But our physical lab was, we use that in the Southern Yellow Pine design value process. We destroyed a lot of pieces in compression to see how strong they would be. We've also done some tension testing. All right, uh, SF5, if any of you guys are uh, involved in the SFI program, we perform chain of custody audits for SFI. We're involved with FSC. Some folks don't like that, but we are involved with FSC as well. We do a lot of pallet inspections. If you see the blue or the red pallets out there at Walmart, uh, some of the Home Depot facilities, we actually inspect the quality of those pallets. It's amazing what kind of losses you can get from a damaged pallet in a Walmart. Uh, fumigation, uh, similar to the heat treatment of the wood packaging material that's going overseas. Uh, New York City Transit Authority. We inspect every single piece of wood that the New York City Transit Authority buys. Most of that is cross ties. Some of that's going to be hammer handles. You know, the old joke about the government and the hammer handles. We literally inspect hammer handles. Uh, Lowe's has 13 diff different uh, distribution centers around the U.S. and we go in each month and do spot checks for Lowe's as well. So, and we do several other things, but enough about TP. We, I just wanted to let you know that we're vertically integrated into the, the lumber industry. So the design values, what are they? Who's responsible for them? These are some of the things we're going to go over. Uh, how and why they were established, why they're changing, uh, what they're going to be in the future, and what kind of impacts this is going to make on the market. I hope all of this is interesting to you guys because this is where your products are typically going. Um, some of the design values, we have extreme fiber in bending. It's called F sub B. We'll see some more on the next slide about that. Uh, tension, parallel to grain, if you actually try and pull the piece apart. Horizontal shear, if you think about sheep shears, that's shearing the piece. Uh, the compression perpendicular and parallel to grain, and then MOE. F sub B is the bending strength. You'll, you'll notice on this slide, this is one of our testers that we use. It's a, an old-fashioned system, but it still works great. You basically put the piece in on edge because most of your 2 by material will be used on edge. 
you pump it up and it has a load cell, that little blue, I don't know if you can see the little blue puck in there, but it will test how strong it takes before that piece actually breaks. You can also do a MOE testing on this as well. Tensile strength. This is a machine that we use that has orange clamps in it that literally grab each end of the piece and will pull it apart. You'd be amazed at how hard it is to pull a piece of southern yellow pine high-grade lumber apart. It can hold some massive strengths. This is a Tinius Olson machine that we use to test the compression values in the last go-round of the southern yellow pine design values. Basically, if you look inside the, that silver piece, there's a, in that sleeve basically is a 2 by 8 or a 2 by 10 standing on end. And some of those high-grade 2 by 10s we would crush uh, would take up to 60 or 70,000 pounds. I mean, we're talking about a loaded um, lumber truck all supported on one of those before it failed. Obviously, you'd have to balance it up there. I don't know how you do that, but it's amazing how much compressive strength you have in southern yellow pine. And this is what we all came here today for. We're all going to go over some basic, basic math skills, okay? Has everybody got your pencils and your paper, right? I'm just kidding about this, but the main thing that I want to show with this slide, this is the, the formula for the proof loads that we use. Notice in there the spending strength. And this is where I want to talk about how the design values are created a little bit. Um, the, this 2.1 number that you see there, that is a safety factor. They took the, the lowest fifth percentile, so picture a bell curve. Let's say that we test 350 pieces in bending. Uh, we break all those and we take, uh, out of that nice bell curve, we take that weakest tail over there on the side. So we're taking the weakest fifth percent, okay? That's our actual, our F sub B. We then apply the 2.1 safety factor. So take that fifth weakest piece and divide it by 2.1. That is the actual design value that folks build around. So there's quite a safety factor that's built into your, your number two, your select structural grades for two befores out there. This will come in, in much more, um, come in handy later on in the presentation. You'll see why I'm getting into the math side of this. So you can see there's a 75th percent confidence interval. I couldn't tell you the math behind this, but I'm telling you that's what the mathematicians tell me. So there's a lot of safety factors involved in this. The MOE, the modulus of elasticity, this is a little bit different than your bending values. Your bending value is when, if you build a, an addition on your house, and this may sound like I've done this before, uh, you build an addition on your house, uh, you're trying to make sure that you can put that couch out there or you can put uh, a water bed on it if it's uh, uh, another bedroom, and you want to make sure that that floor just literally does not break. That's your F sub B or that bending value. Your MOE is when the dog walks across the room, is the whole bed going to bounce when he's walking across? And I do have a deck out back that would bounce when my dog walks across it, so not a good thing. Um, there are edgewise MOEs and there's flatwise MOEs. Most of the testing that we typically do on the dimension material is on edge because that's how most of your 2x8s, 2x10s are going to be used. But there are machines that actually read the MOE in production that do this on a flatwise bending basis. This will be, become more important later on too. All right, who's responsible for the design values? All right, let me go through these bullet points real quick. Uh, the ALSC, the American Lumber Standard Committee, they're the ones that are responsible for actually approving the design values that are presented to them. Uh, they have what's called the Board of Review, and the Board of Review is a three-member panel, and the BO, referred to as the BOR. The BOR is the one that will listen to all of the evidence that's given. Uh, it's typically been reviewed by the Forest Products Lab as well, the FPL, and the FPL typically will guide the Board of, or give a, I shouldn't say guide them, will give their uh, opinions as to the, the soundness from a statistical basis. They're the ones that understand the whole 2.1 F sub B mathematical formulas. Uh, and they're based in Madison, Wisconsin. Now, the accredited rules writing agency, uh, which falls underneath ALSC, they're the ones that are responsible for actually uh, performing these tests and submitting all this data to the Board of Review for their ultimate approval. Timber Products is not a rules writing agency. We've never tried to be one because all of the species in the U.S. currently have uh, uh, rules written for them. There's no need to, to rewrite Southern Yellow Pine grading rules. Um, but we do apply those rules to all, at all of our subscribers in the Southeast. All this is based on an ASTM standard D1990-07. Uh, we'll discuss this ASTM standard later on, so if you haven't fallen asleep yet, you definitely will later on. 
I'm glad some folks laughed at that.